got 30 minutes to do this. Let's go. Hello, Internet. This is Olin from what I'm listening to. Uh, today, I have a series of albums that I guess you could almost categorize as experimental, but I'm not necessarily doing an experimental vlog. These particular albums I would categorize as spooky, eerie, just generally kind of creepy sounding music. Some of which the songs sound creepy, but other ones have just creepy backstories. Nevertheless, all of them are kind of eerie in their own way. I love that kind of stuff. It just kind of adds a new layer to the music. Very excited to show them off, so let's get started. The first album I have here, this is by none other than Charles Manson. Yes, this is the notorious Charles Manson, the guy associated with the Manson family, killed all those people. This is his album. Before he went on the murderous rampage that he did, he had a series of songs that he had written and composed, and he had a friend who was a producer producer who wanted him to actually go to a studio and record them. So after a while, Charles finally went to a recording studio and recorded the songs that would eventually become this album. The album actually wasn't released until Charles had been arrested, and when the producer was visiting Charles in jail, he begged him to release this album because he wanted these recordings to be heard. So now we have Lie, the Love and Terror Cult in all its glory. The music itself isn't necessarily creepy, per se. In fact, it's pretty straightforward 70s folk rock music. It kind of reminds me of the Velvet Underground. But because it's by Charles, who was a freak, it has this sort of freaky folk vibe to it. As soon as I found out about this album, I sought it out. I really wanted to hear what it sounds like. It's pretty interesting to listen to. I highly recommend checking it out if you're a fan of old 70s music. When you're living on the road And you think sometimes you're starving Get on off that trip, my friend just get in them cans and start carving, oh garbage dump, my garbage dump. The next two albums I have here are by a band called Magnog. I discovered this band when I was exploring albums that had been released by the Cranky label, and the thing that caught my attention with these were the covers. They looked very ominous and spacey and spooky. I recommended this band to a friend who was looking for some ambient music to check out, and she later told me that when she and her boyfriend went to sit down to meditate, they put this on, but pretty much had to turn it off immediately after because it sounded like music that you'd play during a ritual or a sacrifice. So now anytime I hear this band, I just think of rituals and sacrifices, which adds an even creepier layer to it. So whether or not you hear ritualistic music or if you hear space music, still very, very good stuff. Highly recommend checking these guys out. Again, it's cranky. Everything they put out is fantastic. These are great. couple albums come from the experimental section of Amoeba, and what they all have in common is they were things that I just bought on a whim. A lot of the times when I go to the experimental section, sometimes I'll find albums that just have interesting covers, and that is enough of a reason for me to buy it. So getting things going, we have an album called Dangerous Orbits. This actually might be the very first album I ever bought in the experimental section. And it wasn't even just the cover itself that interested me. The title, Dangerous Orbits, was enough to spark my curiosity, mostly because I'm a big fan of space music, as I mentioned earlier. Not only that, but it had an employee recommendation sticker on it, which is another good indication that it's gonna be good. So I decided to pick it up, and I was 
very, very interested and impressed with it. I had listened to ambient music in the past, but this was different. It was something that I had never heard. There wasn't much of a rhythm, it just sounded like a collage of noises that created this sort of creepy vibe. And because it's centered around space, it had this kind of spacey atmosphere that loomed in the background. So after I listened to this album, I became hooked and I wanted to hear more music that sounded like this. So this was the starting point for me buying things in the experimental area. It's a great record and it's fucking creepy as hell hell. <laughs> album I have here. This is Prurient's newest album, Rainbow Mirror. Yet another spooky ass cover, but the thing I think that made me buy this was on the back it said Doom Electronics. I also like when experimental albums have a lot of content, and as you can see this is four discs of Doom Electronic music. I had never actually heard of this guy until recently, but he has quite the lengthy discography, as I found. He's also been involved with numerous other projects, but this is his main project, which he does the dark, creepy stuff. I think this is kind of a concept album, because in here there's a short story that he had written to accompany all the songs off this. So I'll have to put this on and read the story while I'm listening to it. Maybe that'll add a new layer to it. It's a great album. It's really, really spooky. It's the kind of music that you don't want to listen to while walking alone at night because it'll definitely give you the heebie-jeebies. The next album I have here I actually have no idea who this is or what this is. Again, when I go into the experimental area, I always find albums that just have interesting covers that make me just want to get them. I bought it mostly because it was only $4.99 and I was very, very curious by it. I actually haven't really listened to it yet, but when I bought it and I removed the CD from the plastic wrap, which I'm having a hard time doing now, I was looking at the track listing and they were enough for me to include this on the vlog just because the titles alone sounded really scary. The lights would stop flickering, voices from the room below, stumbling upon blood and mercury. It just sounds like something you'd listen to while in a haunted house. Brawl Rumbo. I think that's how you say it. This is the cover. It's even more ominous and raises a lot more questions. So yeah, I'm excited to listen to this one. This is a pretty new thing to add to my collection. Um, I'm gonna put this on my computer after I'm done recording so I can listen to it. Should be interesting. <laughs> albums I have here are legendary, especially in the electronic world. These are albums by Boards of Canada. My friend John is responsible for me discovering this group. He's into a lot of complex music. He introduced me to bands like Animals as Leaders or Tram, just because he's a big metalhead. But he also has a spooky side to him, and so when we used to work together at a pizza place, when the store was slow and there wasn't anybody in there, we would put on our own music. And one evening he put on selections by these guys. How I can describe it was it sounded like music from a fever dream. It was electronic music, but just something about it was off. And that was enough for me to go out and explore their discography. And now here I have 
three of their albums. Their first album, Music Has a Right to Children, is definitely, I think, one of their creepier ones. It honestly sounds like it could be a hip-hop record, just because of the beats they use. There's some tracks on here that are just like really freaking bizarre. The Color of the Fire, I think, is just a commercial that they slowed down and added some keyboards to, and it just has this sort of ugh. I Gotti, their second album, takes a bit of a darker turn. It's not as hip-hop sounding as the first album. It has some beats, but it's more kind of down-tempo and jumbled even. Gyroscope is definitely my favorite one, solely because the beat is just so all over the place, and the fuzzy voice counting is just really creepy. <laughs> And then this album, The Campfire Head Phase, I would call this their most accessible just because by the time they released this album, they were pretty well known. It's got probably their most popular song on here, Dave and Cowboy. It's much more spacier and Honestly, a little more uplifting, but there are tracks on this one that still have that something is kind of wrong quality. In an interview, one of the guys from this basically described the concept of this album as a guy who was sitting in front of a campfire and slowly losing his mind. And I think that's backed up by the cover. You can see the guy in an ominous blaze of something. If you have not listened to anything by these guys, you should absolutely check them out. They are essential for electronic music and just music in general. They are wonderful albums. And the last things I have here, I am absolutely thrilled to have them. These are four albums by William Bazinski, his four-part album, The Disintegration Loops. I've talked about William's music in the past before. It's stuff that you can listen to and just kind of zone out in the hazy fogginess of it. Why I include these in this vlog is partially because of their backstory and partially because of how they sound. William had a bunch of old tapes containing ambient loops that he had kept. And so when he was scanning them through his tape head in order to put them on a computer, the tapes were slowly crumbling, hence why they are called the disintegration loops. The completion of the recording of these albums also coincided with 9-11, which he witnessed on the rooftop of a building in Brooklyn. So each of these covers are photos that he had taken of debris in the air as both towers collapsed. And what makes the music so spooky, too, is as the songs progress, they start to basically fall apart. You can almost hear the tapes actually disintegrating as they keep playing. The droning melody, which starts out nice and strong, begins to warble, and then eventually it just stops. The finishing products are eerie, and yet gorgeous at the same time. I cannot recommend listening to these enough. These are beautiful albums. William Bazinski is an amazing composer. If you're getting into ambient music, these should be on your lists to listen to. They are incredible. I am so excited to have all four of these.
All rights, internet. That does it for me. Hey, if you have any songs, bands, or albums, particularly creepy songs, bands, or albums that you want me to check out, leave a comment down below. If I like it, maybe I'll include it in a vlog. But until then, this is Olin from what I'm listening to, signing out. Goodbye.